Every year, there's new data teams looking to migrate their code to the cloud, or maybe they want to use new modern cloud data tools. And this is often what's referred to as a data migration project. These are really big projects. I've been a part of a handful of them in my career. And maybe this is something you're currently working on or considering for your team. But there are certain areas where things can go a little wrong or just teams I find struggle to get the right result that they're looking for from this project. So in this video, I wanna cover three different topics around this that hopefully will be helpful for you or just keep something in mind for you to think about as you go about it for your team. So number one is copying bad code or bad practices to a new tool and then expecting it to just resolve itself. A lot of times I think teams look at these new tools and think that they can just move to something quote unquote upgraded and it's just gonna solve all of their problems. But just moving to a new tool itself isn't going to fix a whole lot. I mean, maybe uh, in the short term, but long term, you're still gonna have the same problem. So if you have poorly written queries or uh, poor formatting or inconsistent logic, that in itself isn't going to change anything. A common example, at least for me, is I work on a lot of migrations with DBT. Teams wanna move from, let's say, a graphical interface process or maybe some stored procedures to DBT. And they think that just because they copy and paste their existing logic into DBT, that it's gonna magically fix itself. But the problem here is that that's not really doing anything. You're just kind of moving your problem to something new. Instead, what you wanna do is really embrace, at least in this example, embrace the different ways of building code, being more modular, thinking a little bit differently about how you model your data and, and using that opportunity to make corrections to your logic, to fix up your code and just be more sustainable long-term rather than just moving it uh, to something new and expecting it to be fixed. Number two is overly aggressive timelines. Obviously companies get really excited about migrations. They wanna get going with these new tools and these new processes and show progress to their stakeholders or whoever they need to report to. But the problem with this is this pressure and this urgency gets shifted all the way down to the developers, which of course we need to be efficient here. We're not trying to be lazy and take forever, but the, the problem with overly aggressive or unrealistic timelines is it spills over into poorly written code or poorly implemented processes that ultimately put you in the wrong direction. The whole goal of this migration is to improve your processes and improve the structure and be more sustainable long term. But if you're forcing people to move quickly, they're going to make shortcuts, they're going to feel like they need to show progress themselves on individual tasks to get things across the finish line. And it's just going to snowball into something that is really no better off than it was before. So keep that in mind. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be lazy here and you don't want to be taking forever, but avoid the urgency to set unrealistic timelines on your project because truly nothing is ever, you know, at least in my experience, I've never seen a project truly be done. There's always more work to do. It's constantly evolving. So try not to be short-sighted on how you pressure people into getting things done and, and think more long-term about what you're doing here. Number three is lack of experience or skill set for a given set of tools. And I will say I'm not immune to this. I've been put on a project in the past where I was asked to build something from scratch and it was all very new to me. And there was a lot of expectations that I would be able to build this and I struggled. I struggled through it and it, it took a while until I was finally able to get comfortable with what I was building. And it had nothing to do with my desire to do a good job or my understanding of the whole purpose of migrating. It's just, if it's a new tool and you're not used to it, it can be really challenging to not only implement it in these quick timelines, but come up with the right logic and make sure you're doing it right all at the same time. And this is an area where you really can't replace experience. Having somebody able to step into a migration project where you wanna make sure you're putting the right practices in at the start to kind of lead that is really helpful. Uh, and then the rest of the team can follow and take it uh, and run with it long term. But a common downfall here I see is where people get put in positions to implement something that they're really not sure about or they're inexperienced and they just take a quick training and, and are expected to know everything. So just keep that in mind, especially if you're a team lead, to put people in position to be successful with this. Again, like I mentioned before, nothing is gonna be perfect, whereas there's a lot of opportunities to learn on the job and migrations are actually really fun projects to do that, but make sure you sprinkle in people with experience as well to make sure the whole project is a success. You're not being too short-sighted on, on trying to get something done or, or trying to cut corners and save costs by doing something like that. So I hope you found this helpful. Let me know what experience you've had with migrations in the past as well, and I'll see you at the next video.